To our top story of the day. Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich was arrested yesterday on staggering corruption charges, including allegations that he tried to sell the Senate seat vacated by fellow Democrat President-elect Barack Obama. In recorded conversations with his advisors, Governor Blagojevich laid bare a pay-to-play culture that, according to prosecutors, began shortly after he took office in 2002 and continued until yesterday morning, when FBI agents arrested him and his chief of staff, John Harris. Federal prosecutors revealed the charges in a 76-page complaint unsealed on Tuesday. Beyond deliberations about selling Obama's Senate seat, Blagojevich is accused of trying to extort the Chicago Tribune, one of the country's leading newspapers, into firing editorial writers who are critical of him. Blagojevich and Harris appeared in a Chicago federal courthouse yesterday afternoon to answer charges of conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud and solicitation of bribery. The charges carry maximum combined penalties of 30 years in prison. Blagojevich was released after paying a $4,500 bond and agreeing to turn over his passport and a card entitling him to own a firearm. A hearing in federal courts will be held in January to determine whether there is probable cause to go forward with the charges. Patrick Fitzgerald, the United States Attorney for the Northern District of Illinois, detailed the charges in a startling press conference yesterday afternoon. It's a very sad day for Illinois government. Governor Blagojevich has taken us to a truly new low. Governor Blagojevich has been arrested in the middle of what we can only describe as a political corruption crime spree. We acted to stop that crime spree. The most appalling conduct Governor Blagojevich engaged in, according to the complaint filed uh, today or unsealed today, is that he attempted to sell the Senate seat, the Senate seat he had the sole right under Illinois to appoint to replace President-elect Obama. Let me take you back eight weeks ago to set the allegations in context. Back eight weeks ago, we had the following environment. There was a known investigation of the Blagojevich administration that had been going on for years involving allegations of pay-to-play conduct and corruption. There had been a recent trial of an associate of Governor Blagojevich in which allegations were aired where people testified that Governor Blagojevich was involved in corrupt conduct. And there was an Ethics in Government Act that was pending that would go into effect January 1 of 2009 that would bar certain contributions from people doing business with the state of Illinois. You might have thought in that environment that pay-to-play would slow down. Um, the opposite happened. It sped up. Government Blagojevich and others were working feverishly to get as much money from contractors, shaking them down pay-to-play before the end of the year. A bug was placed in the campaign offices of Governor Blagojevich, and a tap was placed on his home telephone. And that tap and that bug bore out what those allegations uh, were. I'll give you two examples set forth in the 76-page complaint. One involves Children's Memorial Hospital, a hospital that obviously takes care of children. At one point, the governor awarded funding, uh, reimbursement funding, to that hospital to the tune of $8 million. But he also indicated privately that what he wanted to get was a $50,000 personal contribution from the chief executive officer of that hospital. In the ensuing weeks, that contribution never came. And Governor Blagojevich was intercepted on the telephone, checking to see whether or not he could pull back the funding for Children's Memorial Hospital. In addition to the pay-to-play allegations, which are described in greater detail in the complaint, we also were surprised to learn of an extortionate attempt against the Chicago Tribune newspaper. The Chicago Tribu Tribune had not been kind to Governor Blagojevich, had written editorials that called for his impeachment, and Governor Blagojevich and defendant Jonathan ha John Harris, his chief of staff, schemed to send a message to the Chicago Tribune that if the Tribune company wanted to sell its ball field, Wrigley Field, in order to complete a business venture, the price of doing so was to fire certain editors, including one editor by name. In the governor words, governor's words, quote, fire all those bleeping people, get them the bleep out of there, and get us some editorial support, close quote, and the bleeps are not really bleeps. The defendant, Harris, tried to frame the message more subtly to get the point across to the Tribune that firing the editorial um, board members would be a good thing in terms of getting financing to allow the sale to go forward. But the most cynical behavior in all this, the most appalling, is the fact that Governor Blagojevich tried to sell the appointment to the Senate seat vacated by President-elect Obama. The conduct would make Lincoln roll over in his grave. The governor's own words describing the Senate seat, quote, it's a bleeping valuable thing, 
thing. You just don't give it away for nothing. Close quote. Another quote, I've got this thing and it's bleeping golden. And I'm just not giving it up for bleeping nothing. I'm not going to do it. And I can always use it. I can parachute me there. Quote. Those are his words, not our characterization, other than with regard to the bleep. The tapes reveal that the Governor Blagojevich wanted a number of things in exchange for making the appointment to the Senate seat. An appointment as Secretary of Health and Human Services, or an ambassadorship, an appointment to a private foundation, a higher paying job for his wife, or campaign contributions. At one point, he proposed a three-way deal, that a cushy union job would be given to him at a higher rate of pay where he could make money. In exchange, he thought that the union might get benefits from the president-elect and therefore the president-elect might get the candidate of his choice. I should make clear that the complaint makes no allegations about the president-elect uh, uh, whatsoever, his conduct. And finally, we should also note that the government talked about importing himself to the Senate seat for reasons not having to do with the better welfare of the citizens of Illinois. He wanted to do it to avoid impeachment in the Illinois legislature for his conduct. He wanted to do it to have access to greater financial resources if he were indicted. He wanted to do it to see if he could help his wife uh, work as a lobbyist. He wanted to do it to remake his image, to run for office in 2016. And he wanted to do it to see if he could generate speaking fees. At the end of the day, the conduct we have before us is appalling. That was U.S. Attorney Patrick Fitzgerald speaking yesterday afternoon. Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez was in Chicago on assignment for the New York Daily News when this story broke yesterday morning. He joins us from a studio there. Also with him is David Moberg, senior editor of In These Times magazine. Good morning, Juan. Uh, good morning, Sharif and Anjali. Yes, uh, stunning events here uh, in Chicago the past uh, few days with the, the governor uh, arrested, uh, handcuffed, uh, taken from his house at 6 o'clock in the morning by FBI agents. Uh, and this, uh, this stunning criminal complaint uh, by Patrick Fitzgerald. And uh, uh, David Moberg, the senior editor for In These Times, mm -hmm. joins us. And David, uh, your reaction when you heard about this uh, yesterday morning? Well, I'm accustomed to uh, politicians in Illinois being charged with all kinds of corruption, but this was quite astounding. It really was particularly blatant and uh, audacious. And especially since uh, Blagojevich had very clear understanding that he was being pursued by federal agents and had been almost since the start of his term for him to continue, as the complaint alleges, to carry on this kind of activity is just really mind-boggling. Well, not only to continue, but apparently to escalate his activities, according right. to Patrick Fitzgerald, yeah. and uh, because they began actually a few weeks ago, uh, began taping uh, his conversations and uh, and actually had uh, someone close to him wired, and uh, the uh, the allegations, especially in terms of the. Uh, sale of the Senate seat with all different kinds of schemes as to how he could benefit from having to appoint someone to replace Barack Obama. Right. Yeah, well, it's particularly galling uh, given the kind of image improvement that the state of Illinois politics had gotten from Barack Obama's election, you know, to have it drawn back down into the mire again is, uh, you know, particularly disturbing. Uh, I think it was also escalated by the passage of this ethics reform law that would have restricted the contributions from contractors with contracts over 50,000. Illinois uh, has never had particularly tough ca campaign finance laws, uh, which is one of the reasons why this kind of corruption has been allowed to develop as much as it has. Uh, so the, according to the U.S. attorney, Blagojevich was escalating the kind of fundraising activity at the end of the year. So these two things converge, this bleeping golden opportunity uh, of uh, trying to make something out of the Senate seat or perhaps even to put himself in there, you know, which gives an idea of the kind of ego that's involved and kind of the recklessness that uh, he thought that, well, if he couldn't get enough out of somebody else for appointing someone to the Senate that he could go in as an appointment of himself, and in that position of being a senator, would be more protected from U.S. indictments. So according to the wiretapping that was going on, he was even contemplating that he was going to be indicted and thinking about it, you know, how he might be in a stronger position if he were in the U.S. Senate. So. 
Well, one of the most intriguing aspects, especially for a publication like yours that follows the American labor movement so closely, was the, uh, the uh, allegation in the complaint that uh, I think it was on November 12th that uh, uh, that the governor had a phone conversation with a uh, top leader of the Service Employees International Union, the union official is not named, where he discussed one of his uh, ideas for possibly utilizing the Senate seat to his, the, uh, the appointment to the Senate seat to his benefit was asking the uh, SEIU to participate in a three-way deal with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the incoming Obama administration, whereby he would appoint a, uh, a favored candidate uh, of Obama for